On today's episode of The Bold and the Beautiful, Bill and Liam try not to get jumped on the prison yard. Thomas is desperate to get back to his precious hope. And Paris keeps looking at Carter like she wants to fight. Hey Soapmates, welcome back. It's Friday, June 25th, 2021. And yes, it's time for another Bold and Beautiful episode recap. I'm your host, Keisha Chantal, AKA all the scary looking inmates that wanna open up a can of whoop ass on these two rich douchebags that keep hogging all the tables. What's up with that? Time to drop in on our little outlaws, Bill and Liam, down at the LA County Jail. The first thing you should know is that they're having the same exact conversation that they did on Thursday. So, if you really enjoy having your time wasted, then you're in for an absolute treat. Bill is still very confused that his dollar dollar bills y'all haven't sprung him from the joint yet. He tells Liam that Justin isn't just a great lawyer, he's the best. He will come through for them. He has to. The stakes are just too high. Yeah, stakes are high, and yet resting on the shoulders of one single lawyer. Now, I don't care how many messes Justin Dunn cleaned up for Bill over the years. The fact that he's a multimillionaire and only has one lawyer, <laughs> well, that's the kind of idiocy that I hope keeps him in prison for a very long time. Bill turns to his crash test dummy and asks him if he's noticed anything off with Justin the last time that he came by, because he seems very unfocused and distracted. Interesting that Bill knows Justin well enough to gauge whether or not he's off his game and not giving his full attention to something. And yet, he's not actually talking to Justin about getting his shit together. So the moral of the story here is, tell Justin, not Liam. Call him out. Hell, call him. You are allowed at least one call in prison per day. Am I right? Use it. Phone in for some common sense. More confusion ensues when Liam starts to wonder out loud about the crazy coincidence of everything that's happened. A question your dumb butt should have asked weeks ago, you crash test dummy. <laughs> I swear to God, man. I mean, while the odds of getting into a car accident in Los Angeles are pretty high because no one knows how to drive here, especially when it rains, myself excluded, of course, the odds, though, of getting into a car accident and killing someone that you happen to know who also happened to do you dirty in a paternity test are practically slim to none. Time to descend down into the belly of the Spencer Publications beast, where Tommy Boy is still squawking about how he should be freed so he can spread the news that Liam is innocent. Permission denied. Thomas tries to plead his case to Justin by reminding him that he has evidence that Vinny committed suicide by waffle. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm, that is no way to go. But Vinny really loves Thomas, so it was a sacrifice that he was willing to make. Anyway, unbeknownst to Thomas, he has no idea that Justin somehow hacked into his password protected phone and deleted the video. Just like we don't know how Justin managed to drag Thomas's unconscious body in broad daylight through the hallways of Forrester, past security, and into his car without anyone, least of all Charlie, seeing them. So Thomas pleads with Justin not to destroy Liam's life because of Bill. Can you believe that this is the same man that we used to depend on to gather Liam every time he waffled out a line? Ugh, look at where we are now. Thomas is Liam's biggest advocate? Mm. Truly nauseating. It makes no sense that he would agree with Justin that Bill should stay locked up and rot away in prison for all the things that he's done to the foresters. And yet, by that same logic, Waffle also wreaked havoc on his family, his precious Hope and Steffi, for instance. And you notice that 
out of all the arguments that he gives Justin to get out of that damn cage, none of them involve Douglas. Trash. He's more concerned about getting back to hope than his own flesh and blood. Getting on my last nerve for real. Justin looks at Thomas like, nah son, no one can ever know about that video. And as for Liam, well, I guess he's gonna have to be collateral damage because ain't no way, no how, I'm ever gonna go back to being dollar bills, doormat. You heard me? Now that's all well and good, Justin, but did you ever think to actually stop and tell Dollar Dollar that you didn't appreciate being passed over for his long lost sons? It sure would have been nice to see that progression. Am I right? Instead of being catapulted to this extreme reaction to something that supposedly has been building and festering for over two decades. I mean, sure, we've seen Justin disagree with Bill plenty of times, but where is the discord? Where is the rift? that led up to this pivotal point where such extreme action was taken. It would have been nice to see that. Hell, it would have been nice to make an investment. Right now, I just feel a little bit rushed and I don't know if I can get on board. You know what I'm saying? Time for high fashion and low morals over at Forrester Creations where Quinn is a bit distracted with her jewelry making. But then, a welcome sight interrupts her thoughts. Carter comes in looking as fine as he wants to be, looking for Eric, and Quinn is panicked. She asks him if he's still planning to tell her husband about their little secret. Ah, yes, that one awful mistake, of which there are so many in Los Angeles that keeps rolling down the hill into a deep shit ravine that Quinn and Carter can't seem to climb out of. Quinn wants to bury it, as well as the throbbing ache in her loins. And Carter, well, he thinks it's best to tell the world. It's a conundrum. On one hand, the truth can set you free. And by that I mean, once the truth comes out, Quinn and Carter are gonna be on the streets. And on the other hand, the truth can hurt really, really bad. Next thing you know, Paris busts in through the door. Why doesn't that little girl knock? And she takes one look at the two of them and immediately gets hot. Mm-hmm. Why am I not surprised to find the two of you in here? Excuse me, little girl. <laughs> Maybe it's because they work there, same as you. Anywho, then comes the usual begging and pleading that's been going on ever since Paris pressed her ear to the door and found out what Quinn did with Carter. This whole time, she's like giving Carter the stink eye, like she wants to fight him. My take, shit or get off the pot, baby girl. Either you're gonna open up your mouth and say something and put Quinn in the streets and Carter on the unemployment line, or you don't say anything at all. But either way, we're kind of tired of hearing about it. Do something. Anything. I guess she thinks Zoe will spend the rest of her life thanking her for ruining her future. Eh. <laughs> you will have grossly miscalculated that, little miss. Zoe will not be thanking you. She would probably tell you that she had wished that you had kept your nose out of her business. I'm guessing on the way home from the office, Quinn must have worked herself up into a real frenzy. Because as soon as she walks through the Forrester Mansion doors and sees her husband, she tells him that what they need, what they absolutely need at this pivotal moment in their relationship, is a vow renewal ceremony. <laughs> Ooh wait, Not Quinn trying to put lipstick on a pig. Look at Shauna's face after she says that. She's like, this heifer out here doing the most. We all know Quinn is doing all of this to forget about Carter's magic stick. But it ain't easy, is it, sis? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how can you forget about what Carter did to you against the wall, mm, on the couch, and by the roaring fireplace? <laughs> Woo! Is it just me? Or is it getting real hot in here? The love I have for this man runs almost as deep as Quinn Valley. Mm -mm -mm. 
<laughs> Lord, keep me sane in the presence of this sexual chocolate. Amen. Mm-hmm.